Hello. This is a BX. You're familiar with these, yeah? Um, I've just done some work on this, uh, specifically on the front. I've had the steering rack out to replace some steering rack gaiters. <laughs> They're fun. And um, while I was doing it, I thought, everyone always says, or a lot of people say, we should never do the tracking on a Citroen with hydrodynamic suspension while the suspension's on high. Which is true. You shouldn't. You absolutely shouldn't. But then I thought, do people know why? Or, you know, is it one of those things where they're a bit embarrassed to ask? Well, I thought I would show you why you shouldn't do the tracking with the suspension on high. Before we go nuts looking at the BX, I thought I would show you what tracking is. Um, this will be teaching people to suck eggs to a point. But here is your front wheels. Front of the car, steering wheel, steering rack. Before I draw another one here, which is like this, so this is the cross section of your tyres. Like this. And then your steering racks here, tie rods, steering wheel. The thing you can notice with this is that the distance between here and here, and here and here, and here and here, and here and here and here. On this system, on this drawing, the gap there is smaller, the gap there is bigger. The wheels are pointing inwards, it's trying to turn into itself. On this one, they're pointing outwards, it's trying to turn away from itself. So if you're trying to drive down the road, the left hand side of the car is trying to go left and the right hand is trying to go right. Whereas with this situation, the left hand is trying to go right and the right hand is trying to go left. Yeah. This is toe in. And this, as you've probably guessed, is toe out. So for those who don't know, this is a BX. And as you can see, the back wheel is partially covered. And these cars have hydrodynamic self-leveling suspension. They raise up and down. The, this particular car at the moment is sat pretty much at ride height, normal ride height. That is where you would be running if you were to drive the car. Any other height that you go on will be for things like maintenance or changing a wheel or whatever. So this is the normal height and this is where you would set your track in. But some people can't because the wheel is kind of half enclosed. And this is the same on SMs, it's the same on CXs, it's the same on GSs and GSAs and all sorts. So what do you do? Because on some of those you can remove the arch or part of it, but on the BX you can't. So why is this a problem? What's the back wheel got to do with the front wheel? The back wheel has a lot to do with the front wheel because what normally happens with most tracking setups is there's some equipment, which I don't have. If I did, I'd show you, it'd be a lot better, but I don't, so. Yeah, and normally you put one on the back wheel there and one on the front wheel there. How they set up varies. Sometimes it's a, a laser on the front and there's a gauge on the back and it reads that one. Sometimes there's a laser on the back and it, there's a little like a glass thing on the front and it goes through that and then the angle that's at the flex and it sends the laser pointing at a thing on the wall, which tells you what angle the wheel's at, whether it's towing in or towing out, because obviously that's fixed, that's adjustable. Sometimes it's all done with lasers and computers and infrared and Bluetooth, I imagine. So what's the problem? The problem's that arch. Because in this situation, the equipment that they put on there, the bracket thing, tends to grip inside or outside the wheel rims. You can't attach it to the tyres because the tyres could be misshapen. They probably are misshapen. They could be, you know, you could have one tyre that's got more tread than another side. It has to go on the wheel rim, it has to be on a constant. But you can't always get it on the back wheel. So what do people do? This is what people do. Some people who aren't thinking this through go, oh, I know what to do. I'll start the engine, he says, hoping it starts. There we go. And I shall simply raise the suspension.
and lo and behold, I can get to the whole wheel rim. I could put the thing on and now it, may, it will talk to the one on the front. This is brilliant, isn't it? No, no, this is bad. So why is it bad? What gives? Why does it matter whether the car is high or low? Um, this is a different layout. So now what we're doing, we're not looking at the tyres from above, we're looking at the tyres from the front of the car, if you like. Imagine that the front of the car, this is looking straight at the front of the car, only the front of the car is not there because you need to be able to see stuff. And this is where it makes a difference to how uh, high the car is. So this is normal ride height. Norm. This is high. And I'm going to go for it lower case there for completely no reason at all. Um, basically, the difference here, remember, your steering rack is fixed, right? These are your tie rods. So this is your steering rack. And these are the tie rods. With it's weird, isn't it? Do you call them trap rods or tie rods? Because I always refer to them as tie rods, but then it's a trap rod end on the end. It makes no sense. I think really that's a... a it's either a tie rod with a tie rod end or a trap rod with a trap rod end. Anyway, on normal suspension settings, well, actually, no, let's, let's, skip, let's go back. When you want to adjust the tracking on your car, there's a threaded bit here on the track rod end, normally on the track rod end, and it's the same because it's the same, this is the same car, this is a Citroen. Um, it's threaded, so you can adjust the bit that attaches into the upright here, into the knuckle, you can adjust that. You can wind this track rod end in or out, and that will bring the backs of the wheel here. In our case, it's the back of the wheel, but it could be the front if the steering rack is around the other way on rear wheel drive cars, it tends to be. Whatever, it makes no difference. If you wind these in and out, you will adjust the tracking. So at the moment, this, let's say that is set at zero degrees. Is that the right degree sign? Not a very good teacher. So let's say that's set at zero degrees. This one over here is set exactly the same. No one's played with this, but because the car is high, so this is the rack here. That says rock, let's do it bigger. Rack, capitals. So that's the rack, that's mounted to the car. When the car's at normal ride height, that distance there to there is whatever, X. But when it goes on high, that distance there is shorter. It's like S, X, but less than X. Yeah, I need to work on my algebra. Um, that gap has got shorter because these, in theory, would try and, you know, the, the, the curve, because they're anchored here and here, when the suspension goes up and down, these are pivoting like this. You can see that, you can watch it on a BX. I'll film it now, and so you can watch it. That's a, that's a good lead into that.
Now, whether it was entirely possible to tell uh, looking at those videos, I'm not, I'm not completely sure. Um, the thing I did notice is that I've actually guessed where these are wrong. They're actually anchored at the top. And what happens is when the car's on high, they're actually there. And then when it's on low, they're like that. Or when it's, when it's on normal, sorry, it's like that. This is confusing now, isn't it? So yeah, and then when it's on low, they'd be up there like that. But low doesn't matter, we're not worried about low. Um, the thing we're worried about is that if you set the tracking so that the wheels are pointing near enough neutral or whatever they're supposed to, excuse me, whatever they're supposed to be when the car's on high, when you put the car back down to normal ride height, what's gonna happen? It's gonna be different, isn't it? The way I can demonstrate how this affects the suspension on one of these is using this. This is not a scientific way of setting your wheel alignment. This is basically a little gauge and you drive over it and it moves that little thing at the bottom. So if the wheels are going over it like this, it will force it one way and if they're going over it like that, it will force it the other way. And that tells you in degrees how many. You don't get, use this to go uh, setting any race cars up but, for the purposes of this, it will work perfectly well. So, this is the BX on normal height. All I need to do is push it. Oh, it's not actually straight, that would help. There we go. And if I push the car over it, a tiny amount of, uh, of toe out a tiny amount, half a degree. According to that, it's probably 0.2 or something like that. If I now raise the car up, and I'll do this all in one hit, so you can see. Not stopping the camera. Trying to rev it up then, but that wasn't the throttle pedal. Um, going up in instalments, this one, it's a bit jerky. The struts are a bit, a bit sticky. But it's only on 23,000 miles. Lack of use. Right, the car is now higher. And what this has done is it's changed that point between the wheels, basically, because the track rod ends or the tie rods themselves are having to, I'm doing this the wrong way around. But yeah, the, because they're having to do this, the distance between them is changing. And because of that, what will actually happen now is I will move the car. Well, I assume all this will happen. If I push it over it and it's no different at all, then this has all been for nothing. But I'm just going on theory here. I haven't actually tested this. So I would be quite annoyed if it didn't work, but there you go. So we had half a degree of toe out last time. Oh, let's see what we've got this time. Exactly the same, just the car's on high suspension. One and a half degrees tow out. That's quite a lot. So what you can imagine here is if you'd set it like it is now, bearing in mind that it gives it an extra one degree of tow out, when it's on high. So if you set it where it's meant to be now and then let the suspension down, you'd get one degree of toe in. It would go the other way, which means that the height that you always drive at, you'd be wrong. That's it. That's basically why you don't do it this way. You need to go somewhere where they have the equipment that will fit on the back wheel with the car.
There you go. With the car at normal ride height. This has not been an easy car to do this on because this front, these front, now what you're doing? So the front's dropped too low now. Now it's come back up, brilliant. Anyway, with your garage's tracking equipment, does not fit that down there, then you're just gonna have to go somewhere else, basically, because that's how it's gotta be done. I mean, some people, you could do it on high and then add the degree in, but it, it probably varies from car to car. It really, it really would. Anyway, hopefully that's given you Okay, uh, hopefully that's given you a little bit more information as to why you don't adjust the track in with the car on high because it's different than when it is on low.